So really quickly, we're going to learn about what these other switches do that I didn't discuss and how you can make use of them. So the first one is the shy layer switch. And all that does is when, let's say, you have multiple of these layers, and we click on the shy layer switch for, let's say, the middle one here, and then we enable this shy layer button right here. That'll just hide those layers from the timeline so you can't select them or see them. You'll be able to see they're missing by this index number right here, but you won't have any other way of like accessing them in the timeline. And you can even shy these layers while this is enabled as well. We can just remove all of them. And we can just disable the shy layers option to get them all back. So the next switch serves a dual purpose. It's for both collapse transformations, which we saw in the pre-composing tutorial, where it will set the composition size based on the layers within the composition. But it also is used for continuous rasterization, which is for vector layers. So an example of that would be a shape layer. So if we create a shape layer, let's say we add a rectangle to this, a fill, we pre-compose this layer and then scale it up. If we zoom in here, you'll see these edges are blurry now because we scaled it up without this switch enabled. So if we enable this switch, you'll see now the edges are sharp like they should be. So it'll continuously rasterize this vector. And this will even work for if you import like an Illustrator file into After Effects or even a Shockwave Flash file, which After Effects still supports for some reason, which is honestly pretty sweet. Shoutouts to Terrible Terio. The next switch here changes the sampling quality. So if I scaled up this layer a bunch, if we click on that switch, it'll change it from at first, bilinear to bicubic. You'll see that made like these edges a little sharper. If we click on it again, that'll set it to nearest neighbor where there'll be no interpolation when scaling layers. It'll just be the pixels as they were. If we click on it one more time, that'll set it back to its default of bilinear. If you want to read more about what these sampling interpolations are, I've put a link in the description where you can read more about those and how you know what type is best for what situation. I will say the last option for nearest neighbor is definitely useful for pixel art when you want to scale it up without looking blurry. And so setting this to the last option of nearest neighbor will make that look the best. Moving on is the effects switch. That just enables or disables all the effects you have on a layer, and I showed that off in the effects tutorial. The next switch is your frame blending type. By default, this doesn't have any frame blending, but let's say we wanted to stretch this clip out. So we'll choose a good part of it to use here. And just clip this. And then we can stretch just this part of the video by holding alt and left click dragging on that and you'll see when we play this back it has no sort of interpolation between the frames but if we enable that switch you'll see it just tries the cross fade between the frames if we click on that switch again what that's going to do is it's going to try to track the pixel motion and then use that to interpolate the video. So if we play that back, you'll see what that looks like. So like, obviously this looks really bad for this clip because if we disable that, there's no real information here between a lot of these frames. So that's really only useful for like, if you had slow motion video or, or if you just want like, a really broken looking video that's one way you can accomplish that and when you have that frame blending switch enabled you can also disable that in the comp itself by clicking on this button here so even though you have the switch enabled because in the comp it's disabled it won't show up in the preview here so moving on is the motion blur switch and this one's pretty self-explanatory if we did like a scale animation on this layer and it was like really fast, it went from zero to 100. If we then enable the motion blur, and make sure motion blur is enabled on the composition as well. When we play that back, you'll see it automatically adds motion blur to the video. 
And this motion blur applies to a lot of different parameters like the scale, rotation, transform. And if you want to disable the motion blur, you can disable it on the layer or disable it in the whole composition itself by clicking on this motion blur icon right here. The last two are the adjustment layer switch, which we talked about in the previous tutorial. And the last switch just enables 3D on the layer, which I won't cover in this tutorial series, but it's there if you want to use it. So that's all for layer switches. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about how we can actually render out our video of After Effects.